Hello and welcome to an extra special, extra episode where we look at the incredible array of cars that are either for sale now or will be for sale by uh, the end of 2020. This really is a pivotal year, there's no question about it. Even a couple of years back, I would have had a real struggle to suggest maybe even 10 electric vehicles to someone who was interested in buying one. But now there are loads, there's around 30 available right now and many, many more coming this year. Now, we will have most of these vehicles either on display or available for test drives at Fully Charged Live at Farnborough this year. But after our beginner's guide uh, presented by the magnificent Maddie Moat, we thought it was time to do a proper list of all the different cars that are available that we know about. Now, if only we had some sort of guidebook. You know, where you could look this sort of thing up. You know, a reliable peer-reviewed document where loads of people have looked at it and gone, you've forgotten one of the cars, make sure you add that. If that was available, say on Amazon or at all good bookshops, well, I'd rush out and snap it up. <laughs> Don't know if I can put any more cheese on that. OK, here's the list. Now, let's start with the company, regardless of all the hype and the controversy and the stupid tweets and all kinds of madness. Despite all that, we have to agree, across the board, has really led the way on electric vehicle development in the last 10 years. I'm talking about Tesla, of course. So, what have Tesla got available at the moment? Well, the Model S, long established. The Model X, uh, nearly as long established. And now, more recently, the Model 3. Uh, and very, very soon, the Model Y. I'm seeing more and more pictures of people standing next to Model Ys in car parks in America. And then, obviously, I think probably not this year, but coming soon, the um, Cybertruck and the Tesla Roadster, the sports car. Uh, those are definitely on the cards. You know, they've done incredibly well. Total global sales of the Model 3 are now in excess of 250,000 cars. But to put that into context... They're not really up there with the Nissan Leaf, which has sold well over 400,000 cars worldwide. We're talking global sales here, not UK sales. And we're now finally seeing the big established automakers uh, starting to respond to this. We've just recently seen the uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E. Really hoping we get a test drive of that soon. A lot of people really like that car. Believe me, it looks so much better in real life than it does in pictures. And while VW have had the e-golf and the e-up and i'm test driving the e-up again soon because there's obviously new variations of that i first test drove that on fully charged probably eight or nine years ago and loved it because it's such a brilliant little car i'm a bit obsessed with little cars and the e-up was really good to drive so i've got one and we're uh, shooting a, a test of that coming up very very soon but the uh, the e-golf equally very very popular and of course the long and much uh, anticipated VW ID3, which I drove in South Africa very early. It wasn't a prototype, it was an early pre production test car. Uh, and that was, it is an amazing car. And one of the other cars that's captured a lot of people's imagination and really fired people up, even though it has slightly limited range, it is a city car, is the Honda E. Such a beautiful, cute little car. Uh, we're going to be doing more test drives of that soon. Um, uh, you know, for a slightly longer term, just to see what how that really does respond. But I mean, in that very ridiculously short test drive I had, uh, really loved it. And then people I've spoken to since then who've, who've driven uh, uh, who've driven it further and had longer time with it, you know, really, really love it. it. Kind of everyone I haven't heard yet anyone say, "Oh, it's a bit rubbish." Not no one. Now, our audience at Fully Charged Live last year instantly fell in love with the Peugeot E208 that was on display there. First time it was ever revealed in public. That's the sort of thing that happens at Fully Charged. I'm not going to rub it in, I'm just saying. And now they've added the E2008, which is a slightly bigger uh, version, and we're going to be test driving that soon. Uh, so built on the same platform as the E208 is the Vauxhall Corsa E, which, again, a lot of people really interested in. Volkswagen and, I have to say, Peugeot or the um, PSA Group are doing rather a good job with their electric vehicles. Also from the PSA Group is the DS3 Crossback e tents uh, but not the cheapest option available, but it's going to be, it'll be a really nice car, I'm sure. The Skoda City Go E, another interesting little car. I just think we need, you know, at the moment we've got 
quite a wide range of large, you know, hefty uh, electric SUVs. And they're all brilliant in their own way. Uh, some of them have some drawbacks. They're a bit energy hungry, all that sort of stuff. What we really need is a really wide range of smaller, uh, smaller electric vehicles. And we need them on the road now so that in three or four years time, they're second hand cars and more and more people can afford to buy them. That is what's really important. I just want to reiterate again. I am now 63 years old. I didn't buy a new car until I was 50. We've yet to see the Seat El Born. I'm quite looking forward to that. It's basically built on the same platform that the ID3 is on the MEB platform that uh, Volkswagen have developed. So I'm looking forward to that. Another smallish, uh, you know, easy to park small car kind of really important sticking with small cars BMW i3 that's just got better and better I loved it when I first saw it it is quirky the doors are a bit quirky but I love a good quirk I'm a bit quirky you know I feel very at home in an i in an i3 I see so many of them on the roads in the UK particularly in London really really common really popular car smaller still is the smart EQ I mean that is mind-bogglingly small and incredibly safe its safety ratings are amazing for such a little thing amazing little car and if you want to go even smaller than that the Renault Twizy uh, you know I met the designer of the Renault Twizy just last week in Paris he's an amazing guy he's doing incredible work I always thought it was a little bit like a 1970s bathroom fitting with wheels but it is such fun to drive. If you've never driven one, you get the chance to have a test drive in a Twizy. I guarantee you'll be smiling and laughing after about two minutes. And everyone you drive past will be smiling and laughing too. <laughs> They'll be pointing at you and smiling and laughing as they see someone drive past them in a 1970s shower attachment. It is a brilliant little car. It is such fun to drive. And it's quite cheap and it doesn't really have windows or doors. You know, it's got drawbacks, but it's very safe, very safe. But it's really the Renault Zoe that we point people towards. What is amazing with the Renault Zoe is how it's developed since it first came out. So it's now about eight, nine years old. And the original battery was uh, 22 kilowatt hours and it charged at 40 kilowatts. It's now got CCS charging. It's got a much bigger battery. It's got a range of over, well over 200 miles, real world range. Forget WLTP. This is really driving in the rain, in the winter, when it's miserable in those hills. The Renault Zoe, the new Renault Zoe is amazing. So that's that's going to be there. That Obviously, there'll be loads of them at Fully Charged Live. Meanwhile, the Mark II uh, Nissan Leaf, what an amazing development that car has seen as well. I still have the very, very first Mark I, one of the first production, like where they made the first 100 vehicles. Mine is old. Still works. It's never broken down. Never, not once. It's run out once. You can see the episode on Fully Charged. I made it run out to see what happens. It stops. It's quite shocking. Uh, but the new version, the latest 62 kilowatt hour version, has a well over 220 miles range. On a bad day, on a good day driving carefully, you get more than that. So the Nissan Leaf is really, it's still the best selling electric car in the world. It's been incredibly popular. Gloucester Police have, uh, I don't know what, about 60 of them. You know, they are really tough, easy to use, easy to maintain reliable cars real really good proven track record of reliability now what about to hyundai you cannot pronounce hyundai incorrectly just in case there's any americans watching who think it should be pronounced in another way you can say hyundai 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 anything you like i spoke to a south korean who works for hyundai he said there's no wrong way of saying it just putting that out there uh, the ionic is a brilliant car. We're going to. I think we're doing another test drive of that fairly soon because I loved the Ionic when I first drove it. I love the. That was the first car I drove with adaptive cruise control that you could use the paddles on the steering wheel for. Well, now they've obviously made the Kona, which my wife drives on a regular basis. Uh, she drove into London and back, which is a journey of over two hundred miles. Uh, and she got back last night. She had not looked at the range thing until she arrived at our house. And then went, oh my, and she had a panic attack and then looked at it and there was 55 miles range remaining on the dashboard, uh, you know, on the meter. 55 miles after a two, over 200 mile drive altogether. That is the kind of range you get out of a Hyundai Kona in the middle of winter. It was sleeting and raining when she drove back last night. It was really unpleasant weather. Kona is amazing. Uh, the only problem with the Kona is Hyundai, for whatever reason, cannot make enough of them. Enormous waiting list, enormous demand for that car, brilliant car. Um, not forgetting the Nexo, the Hyundai Nexo, which was one of the nicest cars I've ever driven, just from the point of view of driving a car. Drove it in South Korea, brilliant car. 
Hydrogen fuel cell has a big battery, has massive tanks of highly pressurized hydrogen, has a very expensive hydrogen fuel cell in it, but it's getting cheaper. It was, a, it was the most plausible HFC car I've driven. I really was impressed with it. There is a, a, a hydrogen refueling infrastructure in South Korea, not that huge. You would easily be able to go somewhere and not be able to do it. There, there is some hydrogen refueling in the UK, in the south of the UK. But uh, the last time I spoke to a uh, Uber driver who was driving a hydrogen fuel cell Toyota Mirai, two of the regular stations he had used in London had stopped working, and he had to drive 40 miles out of London to find another uh, refueling station that was working. So it's not there yet, is it? But I still have high hopes. I really hope that we use hydrogen and batteries in the future and not petrol and diesel. That's my simple answer to all those arguments about hydrogen, whether it's the future or not. Of course it is. It's a, going to be a vitally important part of the future energy matrix. <laughs> um, so also from Korea is Kia, the Kia Soul EV. I drove that the first time many years ago. Did a really long drive in it. Had to recharge it in the middle of the night. It did really spectacular performance. It was a brilliant, solid, reliable car. I rather like the look of the the, the Kia Soul. It's kind of like a, like a like how I would have drawn a car when I was seven. But it works. It's really good. Um, and then of course the E Nero again, hugely popular. Basically the same car underneath as the um, uh, Hyundai Kona, but uh, really luxurious interior. It was what Maddie absolutely loves her um, her Kia E Nero. But again. Really hard to get hold of. Massive long waiting list. Same problems. Um, if you want to buy a slightly bigger EV for slightly less money, then obviously I think it's quirky but great. The MGZ, uh, the MGZS, I beg your pardon, from China is is an amazing car for the for the money you get. The the charging <laughs> uh, flap that goes over the charger that still leaves me baffled as to why anyone would make it like that. But then at the other end of the spectrum. If you've got a few quid to splash about, the Audi e-tron. I know Teslas are expensive. Didn't even mention that when I mentioned Teslas at the beginning. Yes, Teslas are expensive, but the Model 3 is cheaper. And the, the cheapest version of the Model 3 is on a par with many other electric vehicles that have less range. Just thought I'd point that out. But we're going back to the Audi e-tron, which is expensive. I've now met three, count them, people who, drive, who own Audi e-trons. They all raved about them. These vehicles can tow. As I mentioned before, and we'll do a, we will post a little report about it. Uh, the EV1 that Chelsea Sexton found in Topeka, Kansas, was towed to the show in Austin, Texas, by an Audi e-tron. It could tow a big trailer without any problem at all. People just love their e-trons, and now two of the people I've spoken to have the camera wing mirrors, and they rave about them. They say they're much better than mirrors, especially at night. They say you can see what's behind you at night really clearly. Who knew? The Mercedes EQC, I, I really have to hold back from raving about this car. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's a big SUV, which is one of the things I'm slightly critical of. But if there are people watching this who are in the market to buy a new SUV, I don't know why you'd need to if you live in, in the United Kingdom or most of Europe. But anyway, if you're in the market to buy that, to buy an SUV and you're going to get one with a V6 diesel engine or a V8 diesel engine or a, or a petrol or a hybrid Oh, and the, the, the Mercedes EQC is just simply better than any of the other cars you're going to see. It charges really simply. It's the most intelligent electric car I've seen. It really takes a jump. And now I haven't yet met anyone who owns one. Again, there's a shortage. They're not making that many of them. There's a big waiting list. Really beautifully made car. Br brilliant to drive. Amazing regen. Because it's big and heavy. When you go down a hill, you get a lot of regen, believe me. So I did rave about the, the, um, the Mercedes EQC. Now, cars that I haven't seen and haven't test driven. The Volvo XC40 Recharge. 100% electric car. Um, it's, it's very popular. A lot of people are really interested in that car, along with the Polestar 2, which I have seen and sat in at the Goodwood Festival last year. And it is a beautiful looking car. I mean, when Volvo do that stuff, when because uh, Polestar is a sort of offshoot of Volvo, just beautifully made. Just the, the, the simplicity, the clarity of the design of that car, I just really loved. Um, I really can't wait to test drive it. The Jaguar I-Pace, I cannot believe, I suppose I should believe, but I wasn't sure when the Jaguar I-Pace came out, you know, how popular it was going to be. 
really popular, really popular with people who've never had an electric vehicle before. For the vast majority of the people who bought an iPACE, it's the first electric car they've ever bought. Fantastic off-road capability. Mine, just absolutely gobsmacking, jaw-dropping. Oh my God, look what that car can do. With road tyres on a really difficult surface, amazing. So that's, you know, again, not a cheap car, but a brilliant, a performance SUV. Enormous fun to drive. Likes to chew up electrons with gusto, but does it beautifully. So, you know, who's complaining? And if you've got a bit more disposable income, you know, I would say, you know, few hundred thousand quid a year that you don't really need why not buy a Porsche Taycan that is amazing when I saw the uh, saw it in the flesh uh, very briefly at the Austin show it is such a beautiful beautifully made the shape of it the way it curves around it's just beautiful car it's a beautiful looking car also out of all the cars I've already spoken about these cars are coming to a showroom near you certainly in the next if not in the next year in the next 18 months I'm just going to read them all out because there's so many of them. The Audi e-tron Sportback, the Audi Q4 e-tron, the BMW iX3, the Fiat 500e. Really looking forward to that. Saw a load of them in California. They're now mass producing them. The Lightyear 1. Won't it be spectacular when you get overtaken by a Lightyear 1 on the motorway and you go, oh my God, look at that. That is running on sunshine. Uh, the Nissan Ariya. Uh, yeah. The Renault Twingo. Just saw the Renault Twingo in Paris, not available in the UK, doesn't matter. A lot of our audience are overseas in countries where the Twingo is available. Why isn't it available here? It's a brilliant little city car, fantastic looking car, super simple. Plug it in, drive it, park it, plug it in, do stuff. Easy, love the Twingo. The Rivian R1S, the Rivian R1T, just kind of wonderful. Won't say any more about them because I'll just sit here and rave about them for hours. The Seat Mi Electric. Want to have a go in that one. The Sono Scion. Brilliant. Going into production. Skoda Enyaq. I haven't even seen a picture of that. The Skoda Vision 1V, which is four. The Skoda Vision 4. The Tesla Model Y I mentioned earlier on. The Unity 1. Such a brilliant... I want to see the Unity 1. At the moment, they're, they're, they've got production facilities at Silverstone in this country. A really nice, super small, little lightweight electric car. They're obviously, the VW ID Buzz and the VW ID Cross coming out, I'd say, in the next 18 months. The VW ID 3 here very, very soon. They've already made tens of thousands of them. They have a little bit of a problem with the software. That happens with new cars. They've got to sort that out. It's not like a wheel falling off. No, the software needs a bit of a tweak. So, lots of lovely electric cars and electric vehicle goodness to look forward to. Haven't even mentioned electric buses, delivery vans. There's a lot of that coming. We're going to go and see some amazing one of those soon. Now, many of these cars will be, really many of these cars, will be on display at Fully Charged Live this year at Farnborough. A massive exhibition hall, just here, huge. Uh, really nice facilities. Lovely toilets. Just want to say that. I always think you can judge a venue by its loos. Spacious, roomy, and loads of them. Because we're expecting quite a few people this year. Train station just up the road, there will be a string of Teslas and electric coaches and buses to bring you from the train station to the venue, which is like less than a mile. It's very, very near. Really easy to get to. Uh, worth getting your tickets early. Just a reminder, the first time we ever did a show in America, at Fully Charged Live USA in Austin, Texas, Texas, we sold out. We could not get more people in on the Saturday. The Saturday is always the busiest day. So it is worth, if you want to come, it's the only day you can come is on the Saturday. Honestly, it is worth getting your tickets early. And yes, there are special discounts for Patreon supporters. You get a ticket cheaper. Mm, you're special. Yeah, you get special preferential treatment. So we'd love you to come along and we'd love you to get inspired to either, uh, you know, swap over to an EV or use an electric pedal assist bike or use, uh, you know, electric public transport or change to a clean energy tariff in your home. All these companies that supply all this stuff that, that understand this, not just not just companies trying to sell things, but it's also organisations that explain how this stuff works and how it integrates, because that's what's really coming along fast, is how an electric car and a house and solar panels and a battery in your house and a different um, tariffs from energy companies can really start to change the way we produce and consume energy in ways that will help 
the planet if you want but it will certainly help you and it will certainly help your neighbours and your neighbourhood and your local community. Uh, there will be at least 42 educational and entertaining live sessions. I'm not chairing all of them because if I did I'd be dead by the Sunday night but here's some of them. Beyond the boiler the future of heating and hot water in your home. As I mentioned in a previous episode, that's the elephant in the room. Calm down, Jumbo. I'll let you out in a minute. It's my elephant in the room. It's very warm in here. <laughs> Bit of... <laughs> Why have I got to do... Why have I got to do an elephant poo joke? I'm 63 years old. I should know better. Sorry. Uh, how cool could a zero-carbon future be? That is going to be very... Because we get brilliant people coming along to talk at these things. Can e-bikes go the distance? A lot of specialist stuff about e-bikes. Electrifying the streets, no driveway, no problem. Mm, that is some, there are some genius little ideas that are bubbling up around there. Choosing your first electric vehicle, really important. What we were doing with Maddie. Um, choosing a second-hand electric vehicle, what we will be doing with Maddie. Uh, we can't wait to welcome you at the Farnborough International uh, Exhibition Centre. Have a look at fullycharged.show. Um, probably forward slash events but anyway if you go there you'll see the link to it and uh, everything is explained on there how you buy tickets blah 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 all that all the links for everything to do with fully charged live are there and uh, interestingly there may be a link uh, that points you in the direction of uh, Amazon the tax paying uh, <laughs> megalith and your lovely local bookshop that do pay tax uh, that's all I think I've waffled on enough, so as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.